Every single year, new ways of making money seem to pop out of thin air, and it's all because of new technologies. The internet is becoming accessible to more people every day, and with the ever-decreasing price of hardware, creating revenue streams online will continue to become easier than ever. Which brings us to influencers. Teams of filmmakers, tens of thousands of dollars of recording equipment, scriptwriters, cameramen, producers, and editors are no longer required to earn a following. You can be a one-man band for all of these rules. Even from the most humble of beginnings, John Doe can take out a line of credit for the newest smartphone and record, edit, and produce everything from that single device. Heck, even halfway decent content is no longer required. So many kids also have iPhones these days that you can make faked, staged, or even depraved videos to gain following. And with platforms like TikTok, YouTube, and Twitch TV growing every month, there is an ever-increasing upward potential for people to take the spotlight. These are celebrities, but not vetted and chosen by a Hollywood casting director. These celebrities are publicly elected by us. Watch time, audience retention, subscriptions, likes, these are analytics that determine which creators will grow and which will not. Your attention is more valuable than you might think, and millions of wannabe influencers are competing for it 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. But influencers are not very different from animals. Just like a pet dog, humans are subject to the same primitive reward circuitry. We can be trained to produce certain content if it has performed well in the past. For example, most of my top videos are about the dark aspects of the black market scamming industry within an online video game called RuneScape. I see the views on those videos and say, wow, number go up. I basically built most of my channel in the last year by exposing scammers and sharing their methods to my subscribers so that hopefully, my subscribers will never fall for these scams. People seem to enjoy that content, so I continue to make more of it. This is despite the contempt from certain parts of the community. I got my first death threats, which was exciting, I guess. People that see me as an enemy are usually easy to classify. The scammers themselves, obviously, and others that would like to see the most popular avenues of scamming stay in the game, such as the duel arena. I can understand the desire to keep staking within RuneScape. There are a few cases where it makes sense, but some people only want to exploit it as a way to earn money from say, Twitch viewers. Gambling streams are running rampant on Twitch, and especially through the RuneScape category. Gambling addicts stream staking on RuneScape to hundreds, if not thousands of people. They lose all their RuneScape GP and might buy more from underground websites like you see here. But often, instead of buying GP themselves, most of them will leverage their influence to take loans from their viewers, and gamble all of their viewers' money away. The odds are stacked against them, but they take loans anyway, and frequently go tens of billions of GP in debt. Now, I want to talk about another scammer that has made potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars from scamming over the years. He also happens to be an influencer. He had 72,000 subscribers on YouTube before he threw it all away and scammed one of my now friends. His name is Return of Wilderness or Wildy Owns One. It was a long time ago that he scammed my friend Michael RS for almost 2 billion GP. Here's the video where that happened. Michael RS had already handed over 2 billion GP at this point because he trusted this content creator with almost 100,000 subscribers. But Michael still had 4 billion GP left, so Wildy Owns One and his friends were trying to socially engineer Michael into giving more, with threats that they would hack all his accounts if he didn't trade it over. Listen, hey, Michael, this is just the start, mate. You there's just... some grand extra. I wouldn't go to sleep right now because you won't even be able to get to sleep. You can try, but you'll come back in half an hour to find out what's going on, so... This is going to get deeper, by the way. It's going to stop here, mate. You better just do what they say, because I've seen what he can do, so it's up to you anyway. Yeah, I think my RuneScape accounts are pretty secure. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll let you think. You know who else it's about you, mate. Michael, it's not about your RuneScape accounts, mate. I ain't going to tell you anyway. What, I'm not going to say data, it. You know I don't have any money out there. Oh, Look, Michael, Michael. Let me show there's you about 100 else. mil sitting around in MGE places. Get on each of the accounts again. Someone else bought their, their accounts for pretty secure. That? One sec, I'm in the middle of doing something. I'm doing it now. That's his maid. He lives with a maid. Alright, now. This was, look in the chat, mate. That was another guy who, who tried talking shit to me. And, uh, you know, he thought, his, he said, my account's safe, I've got authenticator and a bank pin. Thanks for your Elijah and Spirit Shield, mate. That was just earlier. 
It was another one as well earlier. Yeah. Then he You're fought doing shows the... all day now. He, he was talking shit to me on Skype. He was saying, "You can't get through my bank pin." I said, "Okay, give me thirty seconds, straight through his bank pin into his bank for another five hundred mil." So I saw he was streaming gambling on a new YouTube channel. His previous one got targeted by Jagex and taken down. Now, he did all that scamming stuff a long time ago. Maybe he still does it, maybe he doesn't, I don't know. So whenever I see his streams pop up, I figure live and let live, whatever, I can't do anything about it. But then I noticed he was using Settled's exact same thumbnail for his live streams. I mean, as if I needed more reason to dislike this guy, <laughs> this was the final straw. So I clicked the live stream to see what was going on. It's illegal to host a gambling platform that minors can access. You have to be 18 or above to access it legally. There are tons of other regulations that casinos have, and by hosting gambling autonomously without regulations or laws, that can get you in a lot of trouble. At this point, I had already talked to an anonymous source that had told me a little bit of information about this guy. Supposedly for helping run multiple different gambling websites, this guy was on the run from the law. He got sued, summoned to court, didn't appear two to three times, and then fled the country. But he's still doing his gambling streams, and maybe even scamming people. So I'll be honest, I really wanted to play around with him. Player run games of chance is against the rules, so first of all, I decided to mute him. But it didn't let me mute him, it said I could only report players that have spoken or traded recently. So I hop onto my account that isn't a player moderator. I ask him how much money he would like. He says he has enough money, and then starts what I believe to be a pitch for me to gamble on his twisted bow. But his pitch was cut short, because I was able to report him now. <laughs> the manipulator gets manipulated. By the way guys, why did I get muted? Um, your account is being muted for one day. So does anyone know like what this mute was for? Was that like abuse or something? He's just abusing his his ability right doesn't seem right you know but it's all good hey lewis we'll throw you 250 into san quentin you guys want to add some too we're, we're a quarter of the way there hmm. so it's like yeah disruptive behavior right there we go the man literally just reports me back <laughs> Yeah, PK Ready, we we know it's Kem Q. Like, he traded me, then his little friend P Mod just said, Gotcha. I didn't even know it was him till, until um, someone said in the chat, I don't really follow YouTubers anymore. Like, in the RS scene, I don't. I don't watch it. It's it's all fake and gay. I mean, if your if your vice is getting off other people, like if you're if you're just standing on people to, to get success yourself, you're not very successful in my eyes. Get to the grand exchange right now. If you don't do it, mate, I'm gonna end the call. If you, you know, if you don't pull that one back, all right, guys, we're gonna end the call. Guys, we're gonna end the call. We'll talk another time, Michael. You're not willing to cooperate, so there's no point talking. I, I cooperated I say, for ages, bro, and you dude, know that. If you if you enter call now, you're a scammer. And, and Look, if I give you more, the only thing that's going to happen is that you scam me because you no. already made a grand of me, you know. I'm no, not giving listen. you more. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't real world trade terms, mate. Not in a video. I see, I see Just all. bring that account back up. This is all I'm going to ask, right? I want you to go to the GE on that account, and that's all I'm going to ask. The one you've just had up right there, because, look, we can give the stuff I'm to that one. I'm not opening anything more. Michael. He's gone. Farewell, Mr. Wildy Owns One. Thanks to the Jagex team for permanently banning his account. He lost a twisted bow and 500 mil. For my friend Michael and all of the gambling addicts enabled by this guy, justice has been served. Now we can't talk about scamming without talking about the number one scam in RuneScape. It's the Duel Arena. Like Return of Wilderness, Jagex also doesn't check if players are 18 or older when they buy bonds and then stake at the arena. From my last video, a 14 year old YouTube star reached out to me and said that even he had fallen victim to the Duel Arena's allure. How long have you played RuneScape for? A little bit over a year now since I made my account. I have about 30 days in game time. And when did you figure out about the Duel Arena? Uh, it was pretty early on, like probably my first like two months of RuneScape. First time I ever staked, I actually had a buddy stake for me. And it was kind of just like a little thing that I didn't really think too much about. 
But then I actually got lended an account that I started staking on as well, which that led to me just constantly staking. And what level was that account that you got lent? Uh, max account, max combat. So you're doing 50-50 stakes versus other people? Yeah. All right. And what kind of was your experience with staking initially? Did you win a lot of money? Did you lose a lot of money? What happened there? Well, early on, I was making a lot of money. But it really got to a point where like I had all this money at such a like low level that I couldn't really use it. So it was kind of a waste of time. But, you know, I won like I think I had about 600 mil in my first two months at one point. And uh, how did you make that initial money to, to start you off on RuneScape to start gambling with? I, I had like at one point like 15 mil, I think, in my first you know month. And I eventually turned that into like 600 mil. Was that pretty exhilarating for you to turn it into so much money? Definitely. And how would you describe your relationship with RuneScape Gold? Is it something that you prize a lot, you care a lot about, or you don't really care much about it? I do care a lot about it, but you know, at the end of the day, if I really did care, I wouldn't, you know, keep going back to somewhere where I'd lose it. After you had that, you turned 15 mil into 600 mil. What happened after that? Uh, I just remember I went and chucked it, everything I had, I lost it. And then that's really, that's just where the addiction really started for me. And what was kind of the reasoning behind just chucking it? Well, there really wasn't a reason. It's like, I'm sitting there with that much, with nothing to do with it. It just gets boring after a while. Like, I guess being a fresh account, um, so so low, like, I didn't really know how to play the game. And so I just, like, kept chucking, and, like, eventually I lost, so. Gotcha. And so after you lost that 600 mil, obviously you said the addiction started after that. How did you start getting more money? Um, well, I first, I bought a lot of bonds, but um, that kind of got really cost-effective, so... I did, you know, make some really dumb decisions, and uh, I would say I started buying, I guess, off websites, but for the most part, I didn't do that for a long time, because it's, I didn't really trust that, so I just went back to bonds for the most part. How many bonds do you think you purchased, or how much money do you think you spent on bonds? Somewhere around seven to eight hundred dollars, which compared to others, it isn't a lot, but obviously for my age, it's, it's a, a lot of money. And how old are you again? I'm 14. When was the last time that you went to the duel arena with, you know, money from bonds or money from one of those websites? Um, now it's been about two weeks, roughly. Two weeks. But obviously I, I don't really plan to go back, so. Yeah, gotcha. How much money do you have now in, in the game? Um, I probably have two mil and that's just in quest items and obviously yeah, stuff. yeah i mean i i just i haven't even been on the game i just decided to delete it permanently oh you deleted it yeah it'd be like three or four in the morning and like i'd be just staking and like whether i won or lost would just like really depend on like how i slept or like how i felt it was pretty bad yeah so it took a pretty negative toll on you overall yeah, I guess like when it comes to winning, it's nice, but when you start losing over and over again, it's just like, there's no point to do it. Do you think that this experience of, of gambling at such a young age has influenced other decisions in your life or impacted you in other ways? Like, I know I'm not really, I don't know, a lot of people say that like uh, superstition, right? People are like, everything has to go right, like in a stake or whatever. Like some people, you know, like the negative three or like, if you're like on a, a win streak, but like in like my actual life, like watching like sports, like it got to a point where I know it sounds crazy, but I don't know. I just wouldn't like even like want to watch sports because it's like if you go on a negative like five, like you're destined to win, right? Like I used to like use that in my day to day life, if that makes sense. Like it, it's like really weird, but that's just like how I started thinking about things. Like it was really weird. Yeah, becoming a little superstitious. Yeah, that, that explains it well. Well, man, I'm, I'm glad that you had the discipline to delete the game if you knew it was just gonna lead you down a bad path. Definitely, yeah. The best choice for me. There's a reason why it's built into the law to not allow minors to gamble. Because gambling addiction is a disorder and can have long-term consequences on anybody. But minors, who have a lot less self-awareness than adults, 
are especially vulnerable to people like Return of Wilderness and the Duel Arena. I personally got hooked onto gambling when I was in high school because of the Duel Arena. My best friend at the time can attest to the damage it caused me during those years. Some people think none of this matters and this is all up to personal choice, but that's why I spend so much time on these topics. Because anybody with an ounce of sympathy for all the people that became gambling addicts in the last 18 months would understand that this is a serious problem. Which leads me to why you're all here. The new meta for sucking the most money, literally millions per month, out of your audience can be found on Twitch television. It's not ear licking, it's not follower giveaways, it's getting sponsored by a gambling website. Yes! Oh yes! 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 Because the only reason you could possibly be getting paid for doing a gambling livestream is because the sponsor is getting even more money from your Twitch viewers than they're paying you. Trust me, my friend has to fiercely negotiate sponsor contracts for me and demonstrate the value that I provide to the sponsor. I simply won't get sponsors if they don't get anything in return for what they spend on me. There was some recent drama about gambling on the H3H3 livestream. Take a listen. For one now, month, Hassan, awesome. were you you you've never ga done gambling streams, right, Hassan? No, he, it's because he can't. I do uh, enjoy gambling, but no, I, I haven't even been offered because like I've been ripping into it since day one, since it like started blowing up on the platform. Well, so I I don't think they would reach out to me. You know that that DM that Aiden Ross leaked. What a f***ing idiot, by the way. <laughs> but it says <laughs> like. <laughs> wait, wait, I can't wait, say that. Like Ten that he's leaked. No, you you could say that. You could say that. I mean, I think, he huh. was he was getting like two million a month to fucking hook kids on gambling, man. That's crazy. That's that's. Well, that's, he was getting more from the other right from the other brand, whichever one it was. Right. So he's he like, was like, yeah, f that. two million is not enough. Well, the, you you, you, you see, he got, he got two hundred thousand dollars for uh, the milk shouting out the milk token. That, the milk token. Yeah, that's crazy because how valuable can that be? He like gave some really horrible read. For MILF token, and then you know they found out in the blockchain that he got like two hundred thousand dollars. Like holy f dude, let's MILF it up. So the next live stream was this whole dramatic argument between Hassan, H3H3, XQC, and Trainwreck. The boxing gloves are on. Squared up on the right, we have H3H3 and Hassan, and on the left, we have XQC and Trainwreck. Uh, crypto provides an additional layer of of skirting yeah. authorities, yeah. and that's precisely that's why totally. they operate in crypto, and that's precisely exactly. why they operate out of Island. Rather than a legal Canadian casino. Yo, 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 yo! Look at this. Look at my screen, you guys. Train wreck. This is their headquarters, bro. On Google Maps. This is where. Give me a second here. No, no, no. This is important. This is where state oh, casinos my. located. You guys. Oh my God! See. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And now we're talking about their crypto. Oh, this is the. This you got is the like this is the most confidently that this is not a scammer business. What? Train. I mean, honestly, can you? Because it looks, it sure looks like a fucking scam. Look at this. Uh, this it, is their address. Maybe it's not. This is their address, Yikes. you guys. Yikes. Okay, okay. Let's this end, is let's their end. headquarters. Let, 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 back to, this is a shed in the fucking ass woods okay. of somewhere. That's an issue you bring up overall. It's not an issue you bring up by lumping the people in and painting them as as evil or some shit. I don't know why you're doing this. XQC used to take gambling sponsorships, but he doesn't do it anymore. He realized the negative consequences it has on other people, regardless of his intent. But he is defensive right now because he thinks that H3 and Hassan are lumping him up with some really shady people, people that shill crypto for example. That's not what they're doing, but it's what XQC thought was happening at the time. That took up like a good chunk of this stream, but we're gonna skip all that because it's kind of boring. No, there are you. there are vices. It's like saying doing a f uh, sponsorship for a sugary candy is bad because of the consequences of diabetes. Like heart disease kills millions of people. Value that and and regulate them appropriately, and that's because they are incredibly damaging and very hard to reg okay. uh, very hard to moderately enjoy, I especially for a lot of different people. The, oh, I don't trust any company that's run out of a building like hey, this. Hey, hey, the, I don't <laughs> give a shit about the heart. I do. Now, now, because we're not there yet. I love yet. the hot. We're, we're not there yet. We already talked about something. I love the hot. Okay. Then Thank buy you. the hot. Buy it. I could. I mean. Yeah, buy it. <laughs> I will. I will. We should buy this hot. The arguments that I've made have not been addressed or when addressed, you agree with me. It seems like both of you do that gambling is bad. Okay. That it's yep. very irresponsible. 
and it leads you to like 2.3 million dollar losses and yeah. i personally think yeah. if if this kind of behavior is so destructive to the tune where it's like it makes you 15 times more likely to commit suicide it's the most uh, uh suicidal prone addiction out there i think that promoting that to an audience a, a no matter what their age is is harmful drugs, promoting right? it to a younger audience that a, is impressionable is even more harmful promoting it to a younger audience that's impressionable through a website that is regulated is still bad but unregulated because they're based out of kurokawa is the worst thing you can do that's my argument and even if you were losing all the time people are clearly still uh getting on board and signing up for the website or gambling more on that website after watching you and that's precisely why they're paying you a million dollars a month like look they're, I think no, they are, they are getting the bag is one on thing, me. right? And and by the they way, it's not a bad thing. Money, and my affiliates show that. They are losing money on me. They pay me because if I'm going to go live, they want it to be on their site. They find it more damaging if I'm on another site versus being on theirs. Do you understand? They don't what? pay me because I'm bringing them money. All companies care about is the green. They aren't going to waste their money for no reason. Whatever they're paying train wrecks, they are making more from his viewers and potentially giving them lifelong gambling addictions. Trainwrecks is lying to everyone here, or even worse, lying to himself. If you trust, if Yikes. this is the place where you want to put your money right behind me, we can head on over to Steak Casino and play with the likes of Trainwreck and uh, get a huge, re or well, not a huge return. You're guaranteed to lose your money from the <laughs> what from are you train doing? himself, from train wreck himself. Uh, checkmates. That's what I say. R right now, what you just did right there, uh, Ethan, has yeah. pushed it more than me in three months. So congratulations. Yes, I'm sure <laughs> the people that watch you day in, day out, are not using the code that's explicitly displayed on your screen. They are not using it versus me pointing at a shed in the middle of the nowhere, saying this is where it's where it's located. I'm sure everybody's running to go sign up for steak that's located in this shed. I'm sure I'm doing all ton of damage to the youth, uh, the people of America. Yeah, you are. Okay. Excellent. I, <laughs> I, this is like an opinion and a, and a degree thing, but I, I agree. Gamba bad, shouldn't do it on... Yeah. Surely enough, this all ties back to RuneScape. I got a message saying my last video, talking about how people had lost hundreds of thousands of dollars, served as promotion for one of the sketchy gambling websites I talked about. In case it's true, I won't name the website again, but if you guys ever go gamble on these websites, that would be extremely disappointing to me, and I think everyone else watching this video as well. I got another message saying that the website was almost exactly identical to Stake, which begs the question, are these created by the same developers? It would be difficult to create exactly the same functionality and animations without ripping off the code entirely. We know both websites have been advertised extensively by pretty much the same bots at the Duel Arena. Either way, this is very sketchy. I checked out these websites to compare them so you don't have to. But if you're like me, you don't want your personal information logged by an organization headquartered in this building. That's why I used ExpressVPN to access these websites, who are also sponsoring this video. ExpressVPN masked my IP address by porting my internet connection to one of hundreds of locations around the world, so it looks like I'm using a connection from a different country. Before they ever sponsored me, I used ExpressVPN for a dead man mode tournament. If you don't know, TeamSpeak allows your IP address to be seen by other people in your server, which makes you vulnerable to doxes and cyber attacks. The clan I was in said it was a requirement to use TeamSpeak to join the clan. The clan has an infamous reputation of DDoSing people, so I used ExpressVPN to split tunnel my connection for TeamSpeak specifically, while all my other apps, including RuneLight, were using my home network. ExpressVPN was the first VPN I found that had this ability to use different networks with different applications. ExpressVPN keeps your IP address secured, so I highly recommend it for anybody investigating websites or that wants to hide their online activity from their ISP or network admin. The perks speak for themselves, so go to expressvpn.com slash kempq to learn how to get three months for free, or you can use the link in the description. Thanks to them for sponsoring the channel and back to the video. At the end of this entire conversation, we came to the conclusion, right? That gambling is bad. Yes. 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 Gambling oh, yes. is bad. Yes. 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 What? Great that you realized that this was a bad thing and you stopped. And I'm glad you stopped. And I think that's awesome because it's hard to say no to that much money, right? And so it takes a lot. It takes a lot on a personal level. You know, you did the right thing and that's great. And I, okay, think, that you, I think that you did the right thing. I don't think you're a scammer. And I think you're a great guy. I think you're funny and I like you.
Okay, thanks. Uh, it go, goes both ways. Sorry if I if I tell you guys if I say if I send you guys. Oh, this is awkward. Uh, you feel like that's I'm fair. sorry if I send hit. personal you. insults to you guys. This is f awkward. I'm Am sorry if I get any uh, likes. I'm sorry that I can tell you guys fuck you guys or or you're an idiot. It's okay, fine. it's just how it's I, I go with the I would have looked. Yeah, I would have loved a compliment. Bruh. Nope. Well, Train, I hate to say, but I don't like that you're still doing it. Fair enough. Yeah, but, uh, but but you can still say that you like me. And to be honest, I I don't know you very well, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I don't have compliments for you at this time. Oh, but you have okay. a beautiful. I'll tell you what. You have a really beautiful voice. Thank you. Thank you. See, see how great that was. I like it was that voice. simple and that easy. Yeah. How about, how about my jawline? You like the jawline or no? I'll have to uh, do some further research before I comment on that. All right, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. It, when you tune in today, if you like the jawline and Twitch Prime sub, and if you don't, then gift five subs so I know what your answer is. <laughs> okay, sure. Okay, thank you. Something tells me you don't need that sub money, though. I do. Uh, I'm, I'm down. <laughs> That's all I'll tell you what. I will not gamble on stream for six months. If you can teach me how you can preach distributive wealth and your goddamn chat's the only one distributing their wealth to you. You teach me how to do that to my chat and I will happily, happily stop for six months. So he was defending himself the entire stream and then at the very end of it just caved and admitted that everything he's doing is for money. Regardless of what he says his intent is, the gig is up. Trainrex knows that his streams have hugely negative effects on his viewers, but he continues to stream it anyway, even though Twitch has made some further rules about gambling on Twitch recently. When all of this is over and the dust settles, Trainrex will be completely fine. He'll still have his gambling addiction, sure but so will tens of thousands of his viewers that he has enabled to start and continue gambling. While he sits on millions of dollars from all these gambling companies, his viewers, I'm afraid, will not be so lucky. But as they say, Twitch is an untapped reservoir for exploiting your audience for profit. That's what they say, right? Anyway, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in dead man mode. F-A-R-T. Fart is a key word.